If you're taking the Paris Metro, the first thing you need to do is ask yourself, will it be quicker to walk? See, let's do a little experiment. I got a subway stop right behind me here. It's Saint-Michel. And uh, let's walk to Cité. Start the clock. And we got Notre Dame right here. Get the Saint Chapelle behind us. And we get the subway behind us. 2 minutes 20. Probably not worth it, eh? The Paris Metro is the second busiest metro in Europe, with over 300 stations and 226 kilometers of track. It's also the densest subway system in the world. The average distance between stops is a mere 730 meters. That's two times shorter than the London Tube. The metro is the fastest way to get around Paris, if you are traveling further than a kilometer. And it's an icon of the city. I'm Loic with Bright Trip, and I want to show you how to master the Paris Metro. So let's start with a little bit of history. This idea for a city subway emerged in the mid-1800s to answer the need of a growing population. From 1860 to 1900, the inner Paris population had gone from about 1.8 million people to 2.8 million. And with the Industrial Revolution in full swing, creating a way for people and goods to move about the city was crucial. On top of this, Paris wanted to prove it could keep up with other major booming cities like New York and London. But building this was no small task. They had to tear apart major streets to build tunnels through the center of the city and then fill it up and put it, everything back together. In some cases, like to cross the Seine River, they would pre-build full sections of the tunnel in a nearby location that they would then transport to the building site to bury underground. In 1900, when the city was hosting both the World's Fair and the Olympic Games, Paris unveiled its metro to the world with one line in operation. 120 years later, the system has grown into a sprawling, dense collection of tunnels and tracks, with most stops within two minutes walking distance of one another. Although the system is mostly an underground system, there are a few above-ground lines in Paris. So stay till the end of the video and I'll share with you which line to ride to get the best view of the city. Let's master this beast in three steps. How to read the map, how to find your way around, and how to pay for your ride. First the map. Building a subway system is one thing, and mapping it is another. All around the world, metro maps can often be abstract and not reflect the actual landscape. For example, look at this map of New York next to a map of its subway. But the Paris metro map strikes actually a pretty good balance, so being familiar with it can generally be useful for navigating above ground too. Just know that it still isn't a perfect representation of the city. And although this is a subway map, it will actually be showing you three types of public transport. The metro, which uses numbers, the RER, which uses letters, and the tramway, which also uses numbers but with a T in front of them. The metro is the main subway system you will be using. The RER and suburban trains are sort of bigger, faster metro that goes out further out of the city. And the tramway is an above ground rail that circles the city mostly. I'll get back to the RER and tramway later. For now, let's focus on the metro. There are a total of 16 metro lines in Paris, numbered from 1 to 14, plus 3 bis and 7 bis. Lines that were initially part of line 3 and 7, but were separated later. You will most likely be using almost all the different lines if you move around the city a lot. But some that might be more key in the layout are the line 2, 1 and 6 crossing the city east to west and the 13, 12 or 7 that line the city north to south. 
If you travel in Paris, you will also pass by Châtelet, Montparnasse, République or Saint-Lazare at some point to change trains. If you plan a trip with the metro, you'll find that you will almost always have to switch lines at some point. The whole system is designed to get you anywhere and I really mean you won't be walking more than 5 minutes anywhere with a maximum of 2 train changes. So, it really is a network with multiple lines linked by major hubs so that the whole city is covered. Again, this might seem complicated, but once you get it, it's crazy powerful. It might be clearer with an example. So let's take a look at those two stops on the map. Place de l'Etoile and Nation. They are connected with three lines. Line 2 in the north, line 1 along the Seine and line 6 in the south. If you just want to go from one to the other, the quickest way will be line 1. But these lines are also the building blocks to move efficiently from one corner of the city to the other. If from that same spot you wanted to go to Saint-Lazare, then you would take line 2, then 3. If you want to go to République, then you would take line 1, then 8. And if you are going to a tennis match at Roland Garros, then you take line 6, then 10. With the Paris subway, you are almost always changing trains when going from A to B. Looking at a map, you'll notice these white bubbles. This means that it is a connection spot between two lines. Some are just between two lines and some are a bit messier. This is because they might also connect with other transport. This is where the RER comes in, the thicker lines right here. These will help you reach the greater area of Paris from the city itself. If you took a train from or to one of the major airports, then you've most likely taken the RER B. If you want to visit Disneyland, you'll have to hop on the RER A. Inside Paris, you can use the RER with a regular subway ticket, and the general approach is exactly the same as for the metro. It sometimes makes sense to hop on the RER because they go faster. But if you stick to using only the metro within Paris, you will be fine. Just know that because the RER can sometimes go further out of Paris, and that means uh, it can be a slightly more expensive than your normal ticket, use the ticket again to get into the RER zones inside the transport hubs. If you're staying within Paris itself, your normal ticket will work to get in and out of those zones and you won't have to pay anything more. But if you go further out, you will need to buy a ticket in advance. To figure out if you're staying within the normal price limits for the RER, look out for this symbol on the map. If you cross it, it is more expensive. Then these guys with the square station markers are tramways. If one of the stops is highlighted by a thin black square on the map, it means it connects with the metro or RER. The lines you most likely will use are the ones that basically circle the entire city. Okay, so that's the map. Now let's cover how to actually get around riding the trains. To get on the metro, find any entrance mark with a bright yellow M or with the famous Art Nouveau signs. Above ground, you'll find a sign with the name of the station, what trains run in it, and a map. You can enter using any entrance as long as you already have a ticket, as some entrants won't have access to a vending machine to buy tickets. Once you're in, you'll be able to follow signs that show a line number and a direction corresponding to the final destination of the train you want to board. Each line has a tunnel going in both directions. You can double check that you're in the right place in multiple ways. First, there are those signs before heading down onto the platform that tell you which line you are on and which direction you are going. Here, you can find the name of all the upcoming stations for this direction as well as connecting lines printed next to each station on the list. Then on the platform itself, you'll find a sign showing on what line you are, what direction you're going, and when the two next trains are coming. 
If you're using the two lines that have a branch, line 7 and 13, this sign will also let you know on what side of that branch are the next train going. If you are at a station and you realize that you've messed up and you're like on the wrong destination side, most of the time you can just like go to the end of the platform and you can just walk up, get back down on the other side to take the train in the right destination. So it's quite easy. Then on some of the train themselves, you will also have maps with dots lit up to indicate which stop are up next, or you'll have announcements. La muette. So you really have to actively not pay attention to get it wrong and not realize it. When you get to the final subway stop of your journey, look out for those maps on the platform. Those are like the walk around area of the map. At the center, you'll have the subway station where you're in, and then around it, that blue circle um, represents about five minutes of walking at a leisurely pace. Um, and one thing that I love on this one specifically in Gare de Lyon, you have one, two, three, four subway station, basically within seven minutes of slow walking of each other. See? Okay, so now we know our way around a little better. Finally, let's go over the tickets and how to pay for your ride. Up until very recently, the general norm was to pay for the ride with single-use disposable paper tickets. Basically, in the era of smartphones, Parisians and visitors were using 1900s technology. Fortunately, Paris is slowly retiring this ticket and replacing it with a metro card. Welcome to the 21st century, Paris. It's nice to see you here. You can buy this card for a small fee and then recharge it as needed. If you have a new-ish phone, you can download an app to get a virtual card or to load tickets onto your normal metro card. Otherwise, there are vending machines that you can use to buy tickets or passes. If you are just passing through, individual tickets are just shy of a couple of euros, so it's still pretty affordable. You can buy them individually or in packages and load them onto your metro card. If you are staying on holiday and planning on moving around the city a lot with the metro, which I do recommend, then just go ahead and take an unlimited pass valid for one to five days. See, the Paris train system is actually divided between the center of Paris and then sort of like the suburban wider areas. And it's divided in zones, a total of five zones, which you can see with those white and gray areas here. Paris itself is zone one, and the immediate suburbs are zone two and three. Those are the base level for any ticket. But if you plan to visit Disneyland Paris, Versailles, the Fontainebleau Forest, or using the RER to get to one of the airports, those are all in zone five. So depending on your program, you can choose between uh, unlimited pass for zone one, two, and three, or an all zone, everything, unlimited pass. All right, so that covers how you can pay for your ride. One last piece of information you should be aware of is that the Parisian subway system is not a 24-hour system. Trains usually start running around 5.30 a.m. and stop at 1.15 a.m. on weekdays, an hour later on Fridays, Saturdays, and bank holidays eve. Also, if trains run every two to five minutes during the day, they get a little sparser as the night goes on. So take all of that into account if you go and enjoy the city's nightlife. I know this might seem like a lot of information, but after just a few times using the system, you'll realize that you can travel all over the city in a pretty efficient way. And on this, I have to recommend the RATP app. It's the official app and it's a must if you're visiting the city as it will always give you the best way to go from point A to point B where to take which line, when the next trains are, and even what exit to take out of the subway station when you get to your destination. If you're here, as promised, you have to ride line six. It's one of those mostly above ground line with beautiful views of the city. And the most iconic place to ride it is between Passy and Birakane. You're gonna be 
on this bridge above me. You'll have this beautiful view with the Eiffel Tower on the side. You have beautiful Osman buildings all around. It's really nice, it's really beautiful. You should ride it one way and then walk back down the other way. I hope this gives you a little bit more clarity on how to use the Parisian metro. And if you're looking for inspiration on Paris, we've made a whole course with Nathaniel Drew on the history of the city through its most famous monuments. You should go and check it out. Remember to like, share, subscribe, do all the things, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.